So, in after discussion with a few people, this is what I've narrowed it down to. It may change, probably will change. So Club Life is a highly personal study of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. It questions, searches for knowledge, and informs. It is a, a possible insight not only to suffer or disease, but an insight in, or an understanding of one's e oneself or one's essence. I find this whole process, the, the MFA process, difficult, but really, really, really uh, beneficial. You start, I think it is, if you start to understand yourself, and if you start to understand yourself, you can then apply it to your pictures. Have anybody else found that? Have you? No, you cross that. So, and then just memories or imprints in your mind, some will last longer than others. But some of these facts here, I'll, I'll show them to you at the end again. Between 2002 and 2036, the number of people with dementia or Alzheimer's is going to increase by over 300%. And our, our system at the moment and, and the population is going to increase by about 30 or 40%. The problem with this is that the, the, the health service and the, and, the, and the politicians have absolutely, they don't want to know about this. Do you know what I mean? And they're putting it on the, on the, to the back the whole time. This is going to bite, this is going to hit an awful lot of people. And that's only in a small country like Ireland. Uh, 6.1 million suffer from the in Europe, and uh, the numbers are expected to double the travel in 2050. And as I said, it's going to be a huge problem in uh, Ireland and the UK, and it's social awareness. I, I, I found that I've gone from just making the images to actually trying to champion this or trying to get this knowledge out there. Um, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I'm going through it anyway. So. Let's see, I'll tell you in about four years. So, the whole thing about personhood, personhood is a standing or status that one person bestows upon another in a relationship or social being. It implies respect, recognition, and trust. There's Tom Kitwood, who we dated a couple of years ago. He was the founder of the Bradford Dementia Group, and there'd be world leaders within that actual domain as such. And, um, as I said earlier, to me, it's not only, or it not only implies that, it implies possible insight into the sufferer and the disease, but an understanding of oneself. I just kind of wanted to reiterate that. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's an important uh, point. So, this is, I'm sorry, I, I was trying to decide what type of images to make. Uh, when you're going through your, your research, you don't want to make images the same as anybody else. You want to try and have them as unique as possible. So you, you had altruistic, voyeuristic, or, or, or paradigmatic. If, if you want to go out the altruistic route, you know, you're unselfishly concerned or devoted you know, to the welfare of others. Do I only show the positive side of dementia? Is there a positive kind of side to dementia? And uh, so I wanted to be as objective as possible and tell the story as it is. Um, voyeuristic, I didn't want it to become voyeuristic, apart from the sexual um, connotations to it. The other um, explanations for it, a person who enjoys seeing the pain or distress in others. And to some extent photography by the very nature of the medium kind of invites this voyeuristic uh, looking. Um, your, your famous or your most uh, popular person in mind between Susan Sontag and Roland Bard, she uh, paints as a severe uh, picture uh, on photography uh, with her words. The act of photographing is more than passive observing. To photograph people is to violate them turns people into objects that can be symbolically possessed. You can look at it from that point of view, I agree. And then we have our famous art, uh, says, I feel, I see, I feel, hence I notice, I observe, and I think. And photography in general does offer a window into life that may not be visible to the public. And this bit, you know, to inform, to represent, to surprise, to come to signify, to provoke desire, I think that I, I took a lot from that 
and uh, it influenced so many pictures. And uh, this is another book by a guy called Rorty. The process of coming to see other human beings is one of us rather than one of them. And it's as you go through, um, the, as I went through the, the actual project, it made more sense. Paradigmatically, you're going to you know, do the usual thing, you know, shoot images in the same way that everybody else shoots them. I didn't want to do that. So, so I, what I had to do, I did, in my research, I did uh, four or five different um, styles or types of photography that were associated with Alzheimer's. This is a fellow called Peter Granzer, he's, he's a German, and he went for the kind of stark, uh, you know, vacant look really tight headshots and personally I didn't like the images and then Maya Daniels uh, these images were uh, published in The Guardian beautiful images uh, she was just looking at it these are from uh, a French institution and a closed institution where, and they were actually based on the second floor so we couldn't even get out what, 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 most people with Alzheimer's or dementia aren't allowed out anyway on the company. But if you look at it, they're, they're like portholes out, out to a, a different world. And as you can see, the, the door or the lock is people sometimes drift in and out of the city. And so they start to, I shouldn't be here, you know, let me out. So they start attacking the door. Uh, Maya, she's a um, Swedish photographer. She's living in London. And what I find about this is that you know, drop people an email. And it's really, really, you know, it's a great feeling when you get this email back. How are you? You know, you're at the end of a computer and next you're talking to someone about what you want to talk about. And that's what I found. I, uh, the only person that didn't email me back was Granzer. Everybody else emailed me back and I got into conversation with them. Maya's pictures are uh, really powerful pictures. Are they all portraits? No, they're not all portraits. Uh, she went in and did some kind of abstract ones as well. But uh, if you if you go in, just type in uh, into a video of my and you can see the, the whole thing. This uh, girl is a sociologist. She's based in uh, America and she lives in France for six months of the year in Nice. And she did it from uh, the kind of caring perspective. She's a sociologist. But she turned to photography about um, six, seven years ago and gave up her professorship, if that's the correct title. So she started going for the, the more caring, uh, person-centered images, which in, in a good care center are relatively easy to get. It's basically you're watching, it's, you know, it's, it's candidates, basically. So, those are the areas so far that we have been done. But this one now is a, a girl called Judith Fox. And Judith, uh, again, based in uh, Kings, Los Angeles, sent her an email, back comes the reply. This is her husband, uh, Ed. And she married him. And before she married him, she kind of noticed that he was having memory loss. He was a surgeon, uh, used to pilot his own plane, playing golf, all this kind of thing. So, so far what we've seen is we've seen the kind of the stark, um, harsh, hard-hitting images. Then we went into the social care sort of images where, you, you know, everything, uh, the person are being looked after. Now we're looking at it from a, a husband and wife scenario where you're looking at it from a lover, a lover's perspective. And you will see it actually in the images. The, uh, her book is, like, is called I Still Do. And you can actually see the difference. That's the cover shot. Sorry, it's a screen. It's a screen grab, but it gets across the the, the message. Some beautiful images, some beautiful comments, and nice perspective on it. This one is an artist, uh, a fellow called William Uttermold. And as you can see, these are all self-portraits and it's as he's going through dementia. And one of the main problems with dementia is that your spatial awareness just goes out the window. And not only do you have memory lapses and stuff like that, but you can actually see 
it's a very powerful image. And you can actually see what's happening within the mind and within the body.